Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, Fabrizio Romano had confirmed Chelsea are going in and working hard on offensive players, but we were thinking, who? Striker and another creative player. Could it be Cherky? Could it be Paolo Dybala? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Ian. I hope you're doing well, friend. I really do hope that. And welcome back to Chelsea News. The Twice Daily series here on the channel where I reflect on what's being said about Chelsea, giving you my opinion on it. More importantly, asking for yours, a quick note, I am now on the hyped social media platform Threads. If you'd want to hear me, I don't tweet anymore, I don't like Twitter, I deactivated, it's a silly cesspit of nonsense. But I do like Instagram, and because Instagram have made their own Twitter and Threads, um... I'm checking it out. So follow me at Football Yannick, just as you should follow my Instagram at Football Yannick. Okay, then. Uh, Chelsea are moving a lot behind the scenes. The uh, Christian Pulisic developments are moving along nicely. Although Chelsea haven't accepted uh, Milan's latest offer of like what about 18 million quid. They see it as a more serious offer. And now both both teams respectively believe a deal can be done. And of course the player himself and Christian Pulisic is very excited at the prospect of going to Milan. And why wouldn't he be joined to Mori, Giroud, Loftus-Cheek? Um, you know, they are now Italian titans once again. Um, other sort of news I quickly want to go over as well. Chelsea have announced their partnership with Oman Air, which is our, our official airline partner. Whatever that means. <laughs> what, do we only go to, like... It's not like we're playing in Europe at the moment, so where are we going to fly to? Uh, obviously, this is just a sponsorship deal, I guess. Um, a lot of people thought maybe it could be the front of shirt sponsor. It might have been looked quite good, actually, with the, just, you know, the sort of italics omen air. It might have looked good on the new kit. But still, um, it's just another piece of business that Chelsea have done. Of course, um, we've got new like head of business corporate guys in the office trying to develop more revenue for the club so we can spend more money and ultimately be more successful, hopefully. And obviously, the owners want to make that dinero. Um, yes, so I wanted to talk about that. And of course, big stories today are Brighton um, wanting a, a lot of money for Moises Caicedo. We're about to read an update on that from Mike McGrath on The Telegraph. And the situation with Paolo Dybala, 10 million pound Dybala, who's yet to turn 30, although he does turn 30 later this year. So we're gonna get into those big stories. Um, thanks for joining me. Just a quick reminder to s support the content should you want to. Um, it's, uh, it's a nice thing to do. Like and subscribe. And should you subscribe, hit the bell notifications icon. Right, Dybala's got a lot of people thinking, but before we speak about that, let's read about this Moises Caicedo update. As the, the morning video, we didn't go into much detail of this, and there's since been a update. So, Mike McGrath writes, Brian and Hove Albion are poised to... <coughs> oh, God. Poised to ask for more than £100 million for Moises Caicedo after a benchmark was set this summer with Declan's Rice impending move to Arsenal. Now, there is conflicting reports here. Let's see what this old Mike is saying. Chelsea are looking to rebuild on the Pochettino. Caicedo is a target, but we're unlikely to land him cheaply, of course. And the people will Brighton and compare him to Rice in three years younger. But Rice just won a European trophy. You know, Rice has been to a semi-final for his country, a final for his country, and has played in the Premier League for many years in multiple different positions. Caicedo looks very good, but he's also had a very good 18 months. So they're silly sausages for suggesting that. Um, yeah, of course, 500, 105 million pounds Declan Rice going to Arsenal, and only that, only the only add-ons are that five million. So they're paying a hundred whoppers up front, a hundred million whoppers, and the five is add-ons. It could mean um, two nine-figure deals in the Premier League. Look, I got no issue paying what we did for Enzo, considering the context. You know, Benfica really didn't want to sell him. He just won a World Cup and the best young player. He was playing amazing in the Champions League for them. They were like, no, you know, we've just bought this guy. Until we went a hundred and four million pounds, however much we bought him for, and then we went okay. <laughs> but you know he's gonna be 
he really wants to play for Chelsea, uh, Enzo. He did, and he um, he made that very clear to Benfica when he was playing there. There has been conflicting reports regarding Caicedo. Mike McGrath says here they want over £100. Now, I've read in different reports, there's a suggestion that they have asked for £85 million. Um, Chelsea originally looks like they were going to offer 70 and then 80 with... Um, you know, add-ons, so 70 plus 10, which I would have been happy with, which I felt very uncomfortable saying happy with paying that for this Brighton player. But ultimately, if he's the profile, what you need, and then you build on from there, then you sort of take it, and you got to take it when you can. It looks like maybe they went, okay, what about 85 million quid? And they probably went, yeah, 85 million quid. But the issue, the issue, and there's constant dialogue, so say if many re reliable reporters uh, between Chelsea and Brighton. It's not formal bids just being put on the table and then people walking away. It is a strong dialogue. And I guess we can thank the ability <laughs> or the availability of this strong dialogue from the mass amounts of strong dialogue we've had with Brighton over the last, what, 12 months or however, you know, plus obviously buying Kukurea and then uh, in loading them, Levi Colwell. And then, obviously, Graham Potter and all his staff, you know. So, um, there has been a great deal of dialogue and there's clearly a strong relationship with our ownership and Brighton. Um, it might not feel like that for a lot of Chelsea fans because it might feel like a frustrating scenario where we've been fleeced, taken for a ride maybe, um, you know, spent so much money. I'm just going to turn the gain up on my interface there. Hopefully, I'm a bit louder. So, yeah, the, the, you know, a lot of Chelsea fans will feel that. Um, but the, the good thing is there's a lot of dialogue. Chelsea are aiming to get this done before we fly out to preseason, which is in a matter of days, I think. Um, understandably, it's like, it's like Manchester United with Mason Mount. They wanted to get him over the line. They wanted his medical done, his media done, you know, get training immediately before they go on their preseason. It's smart. We would like to do the same with Moises Caicedo because especially he'd be such an integral player. Uh, to the foundation of Chelsea's midfield and therefore the foundation of Chelsea's team. Such is such an important area of the pitch today. Um, so yeah, can we get it done? I think we will get it done. The fact that the dialogue is, is potent and continuing and Brighton, um, I don't think they're going to sell him to anyone else. That's the thing, you know. Um, there are certain journalists that say I'd be surprised if someone else doesn't come in for Moises Caicedo. But I don't think so. I don't think there's anyone else in the market. I know Bayern were interested. Arsenal were interested before. They spent £105 million on Declan Rice. You know, United have got Casemiro and Mount probably in a double pivot. Mount in a double pivot would be interesting, but I do genuinely think that's probably where he'll play. Um, Man City are sorted, aren't they? They've got Kovacic and Rodri and all sorts going on there. So I think in terms of you know, competition, you know, hopefully this won't be the commentator's curse or the kiss of death, but I don't think there is any competition. So I think Chelsea can get this over the line. Um, it's just whether we can do it quick enough. And like I said, really, it's payment structure. Can we agree on a payment structure? Chelsea or new Chelsea are all about payment structure. Of course, in terms of the contract with the player himself, no issues. I think he's happy to accept what Chelsea would be prepared to give him. And ultimately, it's just getting this redonkulous transfer fee over the line. So let me know what you think about that and let's talk about Paolo Dybala. The 29-year-old Paolo Dybala has got a £10 million release clause at Roma. Um, I believe this is if they didn't get qualify for the Champions League. I might be wrong, then he gets the release clause is active. Um, but, you know... Does he want to come to a club not playing in the Champions League? Um, I don't know. I think it's more of a case of um, you just, you know, I'm not going to be playing in the Champions League here. Let me go and try something different. Now, £10 million release clause represents incredible value for Paolo Dybala. Let's, you know, let's have it right. He was such a high profile player for such a long time. He's 29. He turns 30 in November, I believe. So he would represent a senior attacker. Of course, he's um, he's Argentine like our manager, like Enzo, like indeed players we're targeting like Lautaro Martinez of Inter. 
So it would be all about Pochettino convincing him. And apparently, uh, and Felix Johnson of uh, Twitter, who is well informed, says that he understands Paolo Dybala is a name on Chelsea's number 10 list. Now, this doesn't, you obviously got Nkuku starting, but we're looking at like Ray and Cherky and stuff like that. So we're clearly looking for like an attacking creative midfielder number 10, you know, and that's clearly a player we're looking at. Now, he's not an active target, says Felix, but was recommended by Maurizio Pochettino as a versatile number 10. Pochettino has contacted his camp, but Chelsea as a club haven't contacted him directly yet. Now, is he versatile? Well, yes. He's played as a centre forward before, which, you know, we don't really necessarily need him for. We've got a couple. It looks like we might buy one more. He can play as a second striker slash number 10 so he fits that profile of Christopher and Cuckoo and Kunku and they can swap with him uh, in and out and of course you can't imagine he'd start over Nkunku but he uh, is an option there a profile to go in especially considering we've lost Mount and Havertz now but interestingly I'm reading off transfer marked here um, even though his preferred position is is a um, second striker or a number 10 he can play up front but he also has played as a right winger being left footed now suddenly well, this is starting to make sense isn't it because i've been speaking on recent um recent uh videos about how paulo dibala sorry about how chelsea excuse me have only got one conventional right winger and indeed left footed right winger oh unless zh stays which by all accounts you know, are we getting rid of him anytime soon? I'm not so sure. Um, but it's Noni Madueke, who, of course, has got through to the uh, European Championships for under-21 level. So congratulations to him and England. Come on, you free lines, etc. So that, that offers like a really good opportunity to have a player that can actually, a senior player, you know, if you want some, like, know how like you know stay cool in big moments hopefully you look to your Raheem, Raheem Sterling on the left the seniority you look to your Dybala potentially on the right so if you think about that you've got you know a 28 year old in Sterling a 29 year old in Dybala senior wide forwards and then of course you've got your Noni Madueke and your Michalo Mudrik as the sort of young and up-and-coming high prof um high uh, potential wide forwards to play around something like this makes a lot of sense and the tactical versatility from Dybala seems good 10 million pounds I mean he, the thing is with Dybala he'd come to Chelsea and he wouldn't be on a he wouldn't get a long-term deal of course he'd get like a two a two plus one year deal maybe maybe and he'd be on high wages so he would be an exception to this new rule of young players on long-term deals on a very modest i say modest modest in football terms base basic uh, salary would you have him though would you have dibala very very interesting indeed 10 million quid you'd also have to look at the wages and how that would amortize but if pochettino has wanted him and he's recommended him then maybe you know maybe i mean it's paulo dibala if someone told me you could sign paulo dibala before he's 30 years old for chelsea for 10 million pounds a few years ago, I'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Dybala mask. Um, yeah, man, like, what do you think? I think it's probably quite exciting. Um, it would be exciting. But then again, it could be like, I don't know, not a Bamiyang because he's like cooks, but, and I think Joe, Fe Joe Felix, did okay at Chelsea, scored four Premier League goals, and his goals to minutes, probably, considering he was coming off the bench at the end, weren't that bad, and he demonstrated his class in moments. But maybe he didn't work as hard. Is Paolo Dybala going to work hard? I mean, he's been playing under Jose Mourinho at Roma, so you'd think he's probably been working pretty hard, but... How, you know, I'd be really, really interested to learn your thoughts on this. Do you think he could come in the Premier League and do a job for a couple of seasons? It would certainly be exciting. It would certainly be a high-profile move for Chelsea Football Club. Do you know what I mean? For a very little transfer fee. But it's about convincing the club. The thing is, his countryman, Maurizio Pochettino, is a very inspirational guy. I probably called him up and said, look, we're building something cool here. This is going to be dope. You know, Enzo, other people, it's fun. It's going to be cool. <laughs> 
know, the, the, the classic sales pitch. That, that, can, that always works. I'll be very keen to read your comments down below. I uh, await to them. Thank you for supporting the content. Show me your likes. Show me the likes. And uh, yeah, if, if you want to subscribe, you're welcome to. And should you choose to do so, you should hit that. Sweet, sweet bell, baby. Oh, yeah.